Hong Kong is not a very strong country. I mean, special administrative region of the People's Republic of China. In the rise of nations, even though it has a decent population, you only have one city which makes building anything takes much longer. On the other hand, aside from Macau, all of our closest neighbors are stronger than us. And let's not forget about the giant country to the north, which doesn't even need to lift a finger to threaten us. However, today I am determined to change Hong Kong's fortunes for the better by bringing it all the way to the number one spot on the rankings. But how long will it take me? Let's find out. Our overall strategy is pretty simple. Rankings are determined by population, income, and stability. So to get the former two, we should spend the first half of our run expanding as quickly as possible, and then maximizing our tax income by turning democratic and getting tax collection. Political technologies can also help us with stability and getting policies. So to support all the technologies we need, we also need to invest heavily in research by going for quantum computing. Even though we want to reach rank one as quickly as possible. We also need to ensure that China doesn't just kill us at the start of the game. I started by beelining the static lines doctrine to reach fortification effort, which half the time it takes to build forts. Using this, we can quickly build a fort in our city and spam troops. Our first justifications will be on Macau and Taiwan. But why Taiwan? Because China is very likely to attack it, so we could take Taiwan's money without needing to send a single troop to invade. I then justify on nearby Southeast Asian countries and countries that are about to be annexed to steal their money. This is when China tells me that he will let me live if I white piece Taiwan. So I did the most sensible thing any player would do in this situation. As soon as the war started, the Chinese troops to the north just disappeared. I was able to start pushing, but then China. China spams forts all across the front line, instantly bringing the war to a stalemate. This should tell you everything you need to know about the state of the game right now. On the bright side, though, as we're safe against China for the time being, I turn liberalist to later reach democracy, which, along with getting quantum computing to quickly research other technologies, will allow my tax income to snowball in the future. But the war just kind of stopped. I didn't have enough resources to push further into China, and China didn't seem to commit enough resources to push me. After a while, though, the China player did eventually leave, allowing me to line up all of the remaining troops into one spot for my destroyer to take out, and this allowed me to take Beijing. With China practically under our control at this point, we have everything we need to reach the top of the rankings, as they're based on population, income, and stability. By having China, we have a lot of population, which gives us more income, especially as we turn democratic and research tax collection five. Eventually, we were able to annex China. Well, some of it. Many countries declared independence during the war, which meant I ended up with a lot less population than I anticipated. So I then had to declare on and annex all the countries that did declare independence while making sure I don't collapse due to losing free stability for every war because I turned democratic too early because I didn't think that so many countries would declare independence. I mean, that wasn't that bad. As we finished annexing the last country, we were just high enough in the rankings that raising taxes to the maximum allowed us to barely surpass the NAU in the rankings giving us a time of September 14th, 2028. That's it. That's the end of the video. We've done what we set out to do. But what if we could do it faster? I don't know about you, but fighting China wasted a lot of time. So clearly we needed to find a better solution. Instead of trying to kill China, it would be much better for us if China was an AI or an ally at the very least, so we can focus on rapidly expanding and not defending against China. In terms of expanding, Southeast Asia is the obvious choice here as it's close to us while being mostly AI with a high population. Here, China accepted my alliance request, but that didn't stop me from stealing Taiwan's money from him. But other than that, there's nothing really much to say here because I just spend the next few years taking AI countries. I did go into depth once, but it would really only be a minor issue that wouldn't happen to me again in the future. I saw that India was AI, so I decided to risk it and go straight for India. But then, the Italy swaps to India just to get revenge on Saudi Arabia for killing him. And he counterattacks me while I go in depth again. Nice. 
India did eventually leave, as he didn't push me very far, but this still sent me back immensely. It took me months to start going on the attack again, and by this time, Pakistan and Saudi Arabia decided to declare war on India as well. I was alright with sharing India because having Southeast Asia already gave me enough population, but then this happened. Pakistan gave all the conquered land to Saudi Arabia? What? Is this guy using an alt? Uh, okay then. Anyway, enough about them. I wasn't doing well at all at this time. I just barely started investing in economic technology and annexing India didn't even give me a lot of money. However, Saudi Arabia and Pakistan decided to attack me. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention that Pakistan let itself get invaded by Saudi Arabia? It was already getting late for me so I didn't realize it immediately but because Pakistan didn't exist, I could just... piece them out. Still, in the end I was no match for Saudi Arabia and I got forced peace. And that is the unfortunate end to our second attempt. So it's back to the drawing board. Clearly the strategy had some flaws, and honestly, they were clearer than I'd like to admit. If we're going for the fastest time possible, we wouldn't need quantum computing, because that would actually cause us to get other technologies slower. Instead, investing less into research and getting tax collection earlier would also help to solve a problem of having a lack of money. With the new strategy, I made one final attempt the following day. Having a decent amount of population and being allied to India and China, all we needed to do now is to quickly develop our cities to rise the rankings. There was only one problem. The AI USA was extremely high in the rankings, higher than anyone else. So to speed things up even further, I decided to send tanks to destabilize the USA by taking its capital. Or so I thought, because before I even landed in the USA, I had already surpassed the USA in the rankings just barely, giving us a new time of September 19th, 2026. Of course, this could probably be much faster, but it is dependent on the luck you get in public servers, and I'd say this is already a big improvement from our previous record. <laughs> 